Hi, welcome to Making a Difference, the World of Giving. I'm Lisa Dietland, and today I'm going to talk to you about my first book, Transformational Philanthropy, Entrepreneurs and Nonprofits. A lot of people ask me about why I wrote this book, and so I'm gonna take a few minutes and tell you my, about my journey and some key takeaways. So I hope you'll come along on the journey. You know, the history of philanthropy in this country is amazing. They say that Americans are the most generous individuals in the world, yet philanthropy exists in all cultures. I think the reason we get that tag is because it is the most formalized. Think about it. When the pilgrims got in the Mayflower and came over here and settled on this land, acts of philanthropy began right away. It was the Indians, the Native Americans, helping the pilgrims survive that first winter, and saints and sinners, as they were called, the wealthy and those that were indentured, helping each other through that first winter through doing direct social service. It didn't matter what your station was in England or in Europe. You were here to survive together and build a new world. When they survived that first winter and started working together in the spring and the summer, they realized there was no state, church, or monarchy that was going to help them build their schools or their libraries, their orphanages, their work houses, or their, their various hospitals. They realized if they wanted it done, they had to do it themselves. You know, you think about the great Western migration across this country in the 1800s, the same thing happened. You know, when I grew up, I loved watching those musicals and I would see the barn raisings and I'd see the quilting bees. Again, examples of neighbor helping neighbor, philanthropy existing. So there's a rich, rich history in this country of philanthropy. Right now, currently, 12 million people work in the nonprofit sector. That's 9% of the workforce. Think about it, that's more than the automotive industry, that's more than the electronics industry, and that's more than the oil and gas industry. Yet nobody's talking about it. Two and a half trillion dollars a year changes hands because of the nonprofit sector, yet nobody says, hey mom and dad, when I grow up, I'm gonna work for a nonprofit organization. And more than 300 billion is donated annually. Now I used to say we didn't have a bona fide bachelor's program, that nobody went to college to get a degree in philanthrop philanthropic studies. Boy, that's a mouthful sometimes, but philanthropic studies. Yet the first bachelor's degrees were awarded in the spring of 2012 from Indiana University. So we're starting on our way. You know, the book I wrote was a how-to for nonprofits to work with entrepreneurs and for entrepreneurs to work with nonprofit organizations because often they're overlooked. We tend to go to large corporations and foundations and write those grants and hope and pray that our organization will be funded. Yet it's really the entrepreneurs doing the amazing work of making change in our communities, both with their businesses and wanting to help with their philanthropy. So what are some takeaways from my book? You know, I had the great privilege of going across this country and interviewing 23 entrepreneurs that lived both here in the United States and in Canada. And to a person, they said about the same four things. What they said is they first of all saw philanthropy different than charity. They wanted to do philanthropy while they valued the importance of charity. It was philanthropy that tugged at their heart. In other words, while they're happy to help feed someone today, they really want to solve long term the issue of hunger. They wish they'd started sooner. That was the second thing they all said. Oh my gosh, shame on us for not asking them, for not inviting them to our nonprofit activities, for overlooking them and not inviting them to be a full fledged participant. The third thing they said, which was an unanticipated outcome, was the more money they gave away, guess what? The more money they made. They could not believe it. They said the more money they donated, the more that came back in business, the more that came back in relationships and partnerships that furthered the enterprises that they were operating in that community. And finally, the fourth thing they said, when I asked them if any of them came from philanthropic households or families, they said no, but they usually remembered their mom, some said their families, but most of them said their mom, doing something around food and hunger during the holidays. Amazing memories that were indelibly imprinted on their brain. What was interesting is all the women at that point said something, you know, I balanced it between men and women, and the women said, wait, 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 Lisa, there's one more thing I want to add. Philanthropy is more than money. It's a smile. It's holding open the door for someone. It's a hug. 
it's shoveling someone's walk if it's snowing, it's raking their leaves, it's mowing their grass, it's carrying in their grave trees. It's all those acts that make a difference. This is Lisa Dietland, hoping that you'll work every day to make a difference, or as we like to say, be mad.